Hey folks, so most of the time when you see us out here, we're talking about the farm, talking about the kids, the animals. Um, but I wanted to take a couple minutes to just share a few things that have been on my heart these last couple weeks about Afghanistan. And uh, some of you know I've been off of active duty now about 10 months, coming up on a year here in December. And um, it's been hard to watch these, these last couple weeks of what's unfolding over there. And uh, I know a lot in the veteran community are struggling. So I don't want to talk anything really political, but I want to take a few minutes just to speak to my brothers and sisters out there that served, my fellow comrades in arms that, that may be struggling right now. And uh, this whole thing has hit me pretty hard, um, harder than I thought it would. And uh, I saw some statistics this past week that the uh, veteran suicide hotline received like 35,000 calls in the last two weeks a pretty significant jump over their usual traffic and uh, there's guys out there that are hurting and it's it's hard to watch this all unfold without feeling like uh, a sense of loss the feeling that was all that worth it all the blood sweat and tears and brothers and sisters lost over there my soldiers your your our friends classmates those kind of things and and I get it I do and um, thoughts that I've struggled with as well and so I want to speak to that a little bit. And, um, you know, first of all, like, I, I understand. I understand what you guys are going through. For those of us that have been doing this for a minute, it can feel like your whole adult life is defined by this conflict. I mean, for myself as an example, I was 16 on 9-11. Like, that's burned into my memory, what happened on that day and seeing those towers fall. That set the course for me to join the military. I knew I wanted to do something. I wanted to help. I went to the academy and four years there I remember sitting in the mess hall and anytime there's a fallen graduate in country they have a moment of silence that they announce at lunch. The whole course sits down family style and eats. And it happened very often especially 06, 07. It was probably almost one a week. Graduate that was lost. It, a year ago have been sitting across the table from us as teammates, classmates, roommates, <laughs> um, friends that left before their time. And so that shaped everything about what we were doing. We were preparing for that fight. And then I got there and then I did two tours as a platoon leader, as a company commander, and then later training cadets, training cadets to go, we're working at West Point and getting them ready. And everything that we did was filtered through that lens of the war on terror on Afghanistan. And so it feels like your whole adult life was defined by that fight. And in a lot of ways it was. I've been, since I've been in high school, I've been either preparing for it, preparing for that fight, fighting the fight, or preparing others for that fight. And so to see that kind of undone, it's easy to leave yourself with a feeling of, what am I left with? If I, to find myself around this mission and the success of it. And so the piece that I kind of want to try and communicate to you is that this doesn't define you and it doesn't define your service. It doesn't define our service and seeing what's happening there because missions change. And that's a lesson I learned actually when I came out of, out of command. Um, I was a HAC commander at the time and we had gone through a whole year of, of turmoil of trying to put that company back together and um, short version is um, we had put a ton of time and work into getting the company reconstituted to back up so it was working the way it was supposed to. And I left command and within a month of me leaving there was a change in mission and pretty much everything that we had done in the prior year was undone uh, and kind of forgotten. And I remember that not sitting real well with me for the amount of time and things that we had invested uh, in that mission and in getting that company where it needed to be. And it wasn't anybody's fault, it was just things had changed. And But it didn't sit well with me because the things I felt like were my legacy that had been lost. And I realized you can't define your legacy around the task, around the organization. It's defined by the people that you work with how you treated them, how you led, how you interacted with them, and about your mission to the country. In ancient Greece, the Spartans 
train the young men from the time they were 10 till they were about 20 to enter the, the shield wall, to become part of the Spartan fighting force. And the shield symbolized everything about their warrior ethos, symbolized what it meant to them to be a member of that warrior profession. And they had a, a creed that um, I read in Stephen Pressfield's Gates of Fire, it's a tremendous book. But each Spartan youth had to learn the creed of the shield, and it basically went, I might misquote it, but say, this is my shield, but it is not mine alone. It protects my brother on my left, it protects my city. I will never let my brother out of its shadow, nor my city out of its shelter. I'll die with my shield in front of me, facing the enemy. And so that quote and that idea has meant a lot to me um, over the years, but particularly in the last few weeks, of thinking you're, you're not responsible for the entire line. You're not responsible for the army. You're not responsible for winning the battle. You're responsible for who's in front of you and your brother on your left. You keep your shield in front of you and you cover your battle blade. And you keep in mind the mission of, I'm here, I'm fighting for what's behind me, for my loved ones, my countrymen, my city, and I'm fighting for my brother right here beside me. And that's all you can really affect. And if you did that, and a lot of us did, you acquitted yourself with honor and your service means something. And it doesn't matter what happens after that. You have to remember, 9-11 was 20 years ago. We've protected the city for 20 years. We haven't had a significant terrorist attack in that time. And so your service meant something. You've protected the homeland. And now it's time to pass that mission on to somebody else. And the mission's changed. And uh, I won't get into my personal thoughts on good or bad of leaving Afghanistan at this point. But I want to speak to each of you that your service was honorable and it meant something. And if you acquitted yourself with honor, you took care of your battle buddy, you protected your homeland, you did your job. And that mission isn't over just because you took the uniform off. My brother now is my family, my community, the people around me. And my city's still there and I gotta keep my shield facing the enemy. It doesn't matter that I've taken the uniform off.